Okay, and welcome in to another edition of High School Basketball on Next Level Broadcasting. Charles Strail here. Joining my, me tonight will be a special guest, head coach of the Traverse City St. Francis, Lady Glads coach Adam Warren. Welcome into the broadcast tonight, Adam. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate it. We've got a great game on tap tonight between the Charlevoix Raiders and the Traverse City St. Francis Gladiators, two Lake Michigan Conference opponents looking to maintain at the top of the Lake Michigan Conference standings for the boys. Right now, the Raiders come in with a 2-1 and one conference record. Glad's with an unbeaten conference record heading into this game, so it should be an excellent game on tap tonight. I mean, we've been looking forward to this one for a long, long time as it's just about 7 o'clock here, about five minutes before the top of the hour, and... We want to thank everyone for tuning in. This is the pregame show presented by our fine folks at Charlevoix Auto. Charlevoix Auto reminding you that if you check in, you can get a new or used vehicle for your teen driver that's safe, crash test inspected, and checks out on the Carfax report. That is Charlevoix Auto. Also, I want to thank our pregame show sponsor from the Traverse City area market that is Hudson John Deere for being our pregame show sponsor this evening both Hudson John Deere and Charlevoix Auto helping to make this game possible for you to be watching wherever you're watching from tonight so thank you very much to both of our fine pregame show sponsors we're ready for the national anthem and the starting lineups to ensue right after well I should say right now as we've just kind of got a couple ticks remaining on the clock as we work down from 15 seconds remaining before we get going we're going to go ahead and thank our pregame show sponsors and be back midway through the national anthem and starting lineups coming up after a word for these sponsors again with Charlotte Boy Auto. Don't let summer pass you by. Get into a new Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram today and make this the summer event. Lease a sleek new compass for an amazing $339 a month. Elevate your journey in a stylish Grand Cherokee for $429 a month. Or unleash the power of a 4x4 Ram pickup for $459 a month. Don't miss out in getting into your perfect ride for less at Charlevoix Auto on US 31 South near the Charlevoix Airport. Your trusted local dealership. And here we are, National Anthem. We're going to go ahead and take a brief pause here as we show respect for our country. Please bear with us as we remove our headsets and bring in a little live audio here for all of our viewing audience.
All right, here we are. Welcome in. We've got some basketball on deck ready for you. The starting lineups for the Charlevoix tonight. Junior number zero, Ryan Pearl. He'll be accompanied by Hudson Vollmer, the senior, the sophomore, Joe Gaffney, senior Troy Nickel, and senior number 14, Peyton Scott, the five starters for the Charlevoix Raiders tonight. So not a lot of height for the Raiders, but they do have a lot of quickness and a lot of of ability to shoot the deep ball and they shoot the free throw um, at a very high percentage. The five starters for the Gladiators tonight will be Harrison Shepard, Max Ogden, and J.P. Miller, Eli Bigger, and Isaiah Millward, the five starters for the Gladiators. It's nice that the Gladiators go one through five right down the order as it pertains to their starting lineup. That doesn't happen very often, but it's nice when it does. As I welcome back in my co-commentator tonight, Adam Warren, and we talked a little bit pregame. It's gonna be interesting to see here initially how this game is officiated, Adam, because I think a tight whistle favors the Raiders, but if they let these two teams play, I think the size and physicality of the Gladiators extending that man-to-man -man defensive pressure could impact where the Raiders wanna start their offense. There's, I mean, there's absolutely going to be a feeling out period here at the beginning. Um, the coaches are going to be making adjustments. Um, we'll see whether the pressure, um, you know, if St. Francis puts down that pressure, like you said, and whether those officials are starting to call the things tight. We'll see. I mean, they're, they're, both coaches are going to have to make some make some changes. We'll see what, how it goes. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of these matchups that you just want to see in the Lake Michigan Conference. You want to see both these teams coming in healthy as they are. It'll be Millward and Vollmer to jump it up from center circle, or I should say mid-court. I believe center circle is a lacrosse reference. <laughs> and we are officially underway. Tap one by Millward, back to J.P. Miller as the Gladiators start on their opening possession of the ball game. Swung around the perimeter. That's Vollmer picking up Harrison Shepard. Good little elevator screen. And then that one's turned over on the opening possession by the Glads. Gladiators able to set up that full court pressure now. Inbounded to sophomore Joe Gaffney leading the way this year, scoring for the Raiders. Troy Nickel on the dribble handoff. Kicks it out to Ryan Pearl. Shot fake, corner skip to Peyton Scott. Open three and he buries it. So big time bucket for Peyton Scott. And the Raiders are up three nothing here. Bigger trying to go down inside to Millward. Shots up and off the glass is in for two. So good answer for the Gladiators after that Raider opening three pointer. Good post entry by Eli Bigger finding the big man down low. You're definitely seeing the strengths of both teams at this point. You got the outside shooting of Cheryl Lavoy starting things off, and then St. Francis obviously trying to drill it inside. That's right. Nickel with it up top, driving one on one versus Bigger. Corner skip to Vollmer, shot fake. Back to Pearl. He had it blocked inside, but a foul. That foul will go against Isaiah Millward. Let's see here. Excuse me, foul on Eli Bigger. A little bit late on the help. Uh, they need to do a little bit of a job uh, communicating that. Um, Charlevoix got kind of pretty, or got pretty deep in the paint there. So, as the first free throw, no good for Ryan Pearl. Rare free throw miss for the Raiders at the free throw line. The team shoots at a very, very high mark from the free throw line. As Pearl, with his second free throw attempt, it is true. So, Raiders with a four to two advantage. Three-pointer by Ogden is good. So it's now five to four in favor of the Gladiators. Big time shot by Max Ogden. First scratch of the scores entry for him tonight on the long ball. Each team with one made three so far. Troy Nickel beating the pressure. Nickel's gonna drive all the way in to Millward. Had it rejected, offensive board comes back out to Vollmer and the Raiders though. Good defensive play going straight up by Millward. 
Gaffney driving in, kicking to Nickel. Wide open three-pointer is a little off. Rebound Shepard and the Gladiators. Shepard looking to push. Even number break. Swung around the perimeter. Ogden driving into the middle. Shut off by Scott. So far, both teams still trying to feel each other out here defensively, it seems like, Adam. Yeah, I think they're both trying to dictate pace at this point. Um, you know, Charlevoix is doing a good job communicating in the, in the help situation, so. As Millward scores another one off the glass, that's four points for him. He's started this game very strong. That's exactly what head coach Sean Finnegan would be looking for. As Nickel dishes to Vollmer, back to Nickel. Corner goes to Scott. He'll tee up another three. No good. Everything but in for him. Back to Scott inside. Out to Gaffney for a corner long gun. Short rebound. Millward and the Glads can go up by two scores here. And there's a three-pointer by Miller. No good. Rebound to Pearl. We've got just over five minutes, 50 seconds left. We're correcting our on-air score clock as it was a... Uh, Little errant, Vollmer, backdoor cut, actually slipped through there to Nickel. He finds Pearl, Pearl will take the three-pointer high, rainbow, three-pointer, no good, man. Raiders with a couple of very makeable shots that just didn't go through the basket. Uh, as Harrison Shepard sets, sets it back up to J.P. Miller up top. Good job with St. Francis being a little bit patient here. Um, again, the more they can kind of dictate it down low, I think they'll be better off. I'd be a little concerned if I was Coach Finnegan right now. Right now, Charlevoix is getting really all the shots they want to get. They're just not falling right now. And there's another turnover for the Gladiators. They're second of the game so far in the first three minutes. Nickel gets a high ball screen on the drag screen. He's going to scoop the layup in and very nice crafty finish for Troy Nickel using the opposite side of the backboard, and it's 7-6. to six. Not a lot of high schoolers can make that shot there, Adam. No, that was that was good. He, he made a pretty good adjustment in the air on that one. As Gaffney gets the theft, he's going to cruise in for another Raider basket. So now it's 8-7 to seven in favor of the Raiders. Three turnovers so far for the Gladiators here, not even halfway into the first quarter. Yeah, they need, definitely need to do a better job uh, taking care of the ball, maintaining possessions, keep being patient. Bigger over to Shepard, J.P. Miller. Flex cut by Bigger, and it goes out of bounds. Fourth turnover for the Glads in the first three minutes, 40 seconds of play. They just need to settle down. I don't know if the defense of Charlevoix is impacting them or not, but it seems like they're just not used to the speed. Yeah, I mean, like I said, they're still feeling each other out. I think it was the right look there. They just didn't make an accurate pass, right? They think they would have had a layup if they would have just put it on the button. Raiders looking to get a quick ball reversal. Scott to Vollmer, a little head and shoulder fake by Vollmer. Nice baseline layup is good for Vollmer, and the Raiders have a three-point advantage. First score of the game for Vollmer. Back up top to Miller. He'll drive and get to the elbow. Back to Ogden, a little shoulder fake. Free throw line jump shot, no good. Pearl with the rebound. Gladiators have gone cold here the last three minutes. Vollmer looks at a three. Nice cut by Nickel. He Euro steps past the defender. And don't look now, but the Raiders are amidst a six nothing or excuse me, an eight nothing run with three minutes and twenty-seven seconds remaining in the first quarter. A steal by Ryan Pearl. Another gladiator turnover. It's an even number break. Nickel has it over to Scott. Driving baseline. Back to Pearl to Gaffney. Open three-pointer, and he got it. Oh, man, the Raiders are feeling it now in the midst of an 11-0 run. It's 15-7, Charlevoix on top. And, oh, boy, the Gladiators need to take a timeout because it's an 11-0 run. Coach Adam, let me bring you in from a coaching perspective. When you get into this kind of spurt that an other team has, what do you have to do to try and rally the troops but also just kind of settle them down as it pertains to being able to come back, execute a good offensive set, try to get a basket, and then get a stop. Well, you know, St. Francis is down by eight right now. They certainly aren't going to make up those eight points in one possession. Um, so they really need to shirt sure up on the defensive end, do a little better, maybe a little better job communicating, get some stops in one possession at a time. Um, certainly offensively, if they can take, get a little more patient, 
they've got some good looks. They're just not putting it on the money. Um, and obviously with those turnovers, it's turning into easy, easy transition points. Well, you said it just right there. And in the midst of an 11-0 run, it's been kind of fueled by those turnovers and points off of those turnovers for the Raiders. They've gotten out into transition. They've made a couple of easy shots. I think the Gladiators will be able to respond here favorably. Just now that they've got their feet wet in this game, they can kind of settle in and, and adjust to the, the speed that Charlevoix plays on offense with. I think that's the biggest thing for them to uh, get adjusted or acclimated to the Gladiators, that is. I would agree. I mean, St. Francis definitely one of their strengths is to dictate pressure. Um, but they, if they can... There's a nice entry pass yeah. right into Isaiah now Millward. They get into their press a little bit. And Millward with six points so far in the contest, all coming inside, working on that uh, bottom low block area. Pearl drives, shut off by Millward. Corner kip to Vol skip to Vollmer. Pearl going to drive baseline again, shut off by Shepard. Gaffney with a deep three-pointer. Short, rebound fought for, controlled and saved by Pearl. Out to Nickel. Nickel almost traveled. Pearl driving baseline again, and he almost traveled again. Pearl catches. Reverse layup is good. Assist to Troy Nickel on that one. So the uh, the referees, I don't want to say doing Charlevoix a favor there, but letting um, the players settle the list one. Yeah, I would, I, I, I'd commend the officials to kind of let these teams play. I mean, ultimately you want these athletes to kind of dictate the outcomes of these games, and, and right now they're letting both teams kind of bang around a little bit. And that one thrown away on the post-entry pass, unable to climb the ladder and retrieve that one was Millward. So one minute, 51 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Raiders already with 17 points. Gladiators with six turnovers in the first quarter. So maybe they can generate some turnovers of their own here with this extended pressure look. And there it is right there. Max Ogden with the thievery and gets the basket as well. That's exactly what the Gladiators needed to try and you know, cut this lead down before the end of the first quarter as Scott has it tripped up, gets it out to Vitaly Collins, who just checked into the game. Pearl with a hesitation move into the paint. Dribble drive by Scott, backdoor cut by Vollmer. That was a nice play. Scott on the assist, Vollmer gets another basket. The Raiders doing a lot of damage on the baseline on those reverse layups so far, Adam. Yeah, it's Coach Finnegan's staff, I mean, they, they typically allow baseline, um, trying to use that baseline as an additional defender. But right now that help side defense is a little slow getting to it. As a help side attempt play made by Peyton Scott to throw it off of, it looked like he was attempting to throw it off of a gladiator. I'm not, not sure who he was trying to throw it off of as it was inbounded to bigger. Ogden can't quite squeeze it. And another turnover for the Gladiators. So a lot of this eight-point Charlevoix lead is the Raiders, and then it's also been added to by the Gladiator miscues. Yeah, certainly St. Francis isn't helping themselves. I mean, you definitely don't want to give the caliber team of like Charlevoix extra opportunities. Vitaly Collins with it being guarded closely by Bobrowski. Vollmer no good on the shot attempt, rebounded inside by the Gladiators. Ogden with it being guarded by Collins. Corner kick to Shepard, he'll take the three pointer, no good. Rebound tracked down by Vollmer and the Gladiators as the Gladiator hit the deck hard. Vollmer gets a little side hip check, Pearl tees up a three pointer, too strong off the back of the rim, the Gladiators will play for the last shot of the quarter here. Shepard has it in the corner, driving baseline. He's fouled by Ryan Pearl. For five seconds remaining in the first quarter, and that's called on the ground. First foul against Ryan Pearl. Only the first team foul against the Raiders. Both teams with one team foul after one quarter of play. That's what I like to see as a fan of basketball. Absolutely. You don't want to see a lot of stoppage of play. Uh, good decision there by Harrison after taking that first three. At least had them chasing on him, and then he, then he obviously took it to the rim. 
Inbounded to Ogden, little shot fake, and he buries the three-pointer. And that's how we will end the first quarter of play. So after eight minutes in the books, we got a high-scoring affair between the Raiders and Gladiators. It's 19 to 14. Oh my, we got a good one brewing here from St. Francis High School. We're going to go ahead and step aside when we come back. Second quarter action coming up after these messages. Time to fly from your northern Michigan hometown Cherry Capital Airport, TVC. TVC Airport will get you to your dream destination anywhere in the world. Visit tvcairport.com now. And here we are. Welcome back in. It's the second quarter between the Gladiators and the Raiders. Want to give a shout out to our friends and sponsors the Traverse City Cherry Capital Airport. Reminding you that when you fly this winter to fly Traverse City Cherry Capital, if you're looking to get out of the snow, get out of the rain, the wetness of northern Michigan this winter, it's blatantly obvious to fly Traverse City Cherry Capital. Charles Strail along with Adam Warren here tonight for tonight's varsity game between the Raiders and the Gladiators. It's a 19-14 to lead for the Raiders. They're up by a handful after eight minutes of play. And Coach Warren, it's been a lot of the Raiders creating good shot opportunities and the Gladiators forcing uh, turnovers of their own. Um, say, yeah, fortunately, I would say St. Francis weathered the storm there. I mean, um, with all the turnovers, this could be a much more lopsided game. Um, but obviously, with them finishing the quarter tough, um, kept it fairly close, and maybe they can clean things up. So here we are beginning the second quarter tonight. A couple new players on the floor for the Gladiators. Got Bobrowski also with Isaac Kerr. And another check-in for Max King. As that shot no good, rebounded by Ogden and the Gladiators. Looking to push. Ogden taking the pull-up transition three-pointer. Vitaly Collins secures the defensive rebound. Raiders going all the way up the floor to Logan Watkins, and he turns it over. Good hands by Chris Bobrowski. Max King with it on the perimeter. Leans in for a jump shot. No good. Wanted to get the call on the contact, but the referee didn't give it to him. Letting the boys play tonight. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to adjust to that, play through any contacts until they start getting some calls. Watkins has checked in for the Raiders now. Pearl driving on the right side, kicking it out to Troy Nickel. Wide open look. Nice pass by Pearl, but Nickel couldn't drop it down for three. Rebounded by Bobrowski. Pushing it up the floor is King. Trying to work around through the baseline. Put it right through the legs of Isaac Kerr. And the Raiders with another takeaway. Nickel with it on the far side, being guarded by Michael Bohr. Back to Collins, looks at a shot, turns it into a 14-footer, no good. Rebounded by Ogden. You know, the one thing St. Francis is doing a good job is they're, they're allowing one shot and they're getting the board, you know. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully from their perspective, Charlevoix will stay a little bit cold from the outside. Yeah, uh, Raiders with only two made three-pointers so far. As Ogden kind of forces his way into the paint, puts up a nice free-throw line jump shot. He's got the last five for the Gladiators. It's a three-point game in favor of the Raiders. Pearl with it. Swung around the perimeter. Gaffney trying to penetrate. Puts it up and has it rejected. Nice play made by Chris Bobrowski. And he's trying to get the Gladiators pumped up here. As not a lot of energy in the, in the gym tonight. But Bobrowski trying to kind of kick the tires on this one to get this defensive pressure turned up for the Gladiators. You know, as a coach, that's what you love. You, know, you get guys coming off the bench, bringing that kind of energy, creating sparks, um, hopefully to change the tide. You know, So he's doing a good job. It'll be Vollmer to inbound for the Raiders. Finds a wide open nickel. He's going to take the three-pointer, and he's going to bury it. So a little lapse of coverage there on the defensive end, and nickel makes the three-pointer. Third three-pointer of the game for the Raiders. Six-point lead now as Vollmer goes for the steal. Shepard finds King. Up top, taking the long gun and making the triple. Nice shot made by the Gladiators. It was Michael Bohr dialing it up from deep. His first points of the contest. 
Stolen away there by Max King. Back to Harrison Shepard. Little push shot, no good. Vollmer secures the defensive rebound. And the Raiders are going to pause for a little bit and try to set things up. Just kidding. Jackson Kraus with a three-pointer. Had it rejected by Isaac Kerr. Kerr making his presence known as he swatted that one almost into the student section, second row. And certainly St. Francis doing a good job uh, do, playing well on defense to create offense. That's certainly a theme that Coach Finnegan will, will share from year to year. Ball inbounded into the backcourt to Joe Gaffney. He's working against Bobrowski. Raiders with a little dribble handoff. Troy Nickel has it punched away out to Logan Watkins. Gaffney with it up top, trying to break down this Gladiator defense, working against Michael Bohr. Gaffney inside, a little push float shot, no good. Wanted the call, didn't get it. We've got some players tied up in the backcourt as Harrison Shepard pushes it to the front court. Max King now with it. Skip pass to Michael Bohr, driving into the middle of the paint, a little running hook shot, no good. Rebound, Isaac Kerr fighting for it. Back out to King, he'll let a three fly, too strong. So Gladiators with some good looks there, just unable to get that deciding three-pointer to go down. The officials are definitely letting things go. Um, we'll see how that, how that plays out during the game here. Yeah, it's a very physical game so far. One thing I will say, though, only one team foul through almost 12 minutes of play here. And in high school basketball, oftentimes you see games decided by foul trouble. And I'll say this for the officials. I don't think this game's going to be decided by a significant player experiencing foul trouble, which is what I love to see. I mean, you never want to see, you know, a player not able to play at their most aggressiveness or just their instinctiveness as they typically would play because they're saddled by foul trouble. So the both teams so far in this quarter have exchanged three pointers. It was 19 uh, to 14 at the end of the first quarter. And well, the difference in the game, I would say, has been the turnover margin and the points off of turnovers yeah, so both, far both, in favor. Both, both teams are definitely settling in. Um, the defenses are definitely locking in. I agree with you that the officials are doing a good job being consistent with both sides and letting the kids play. Uh, that is a Charlevoix turnover. The one thing I do want to say, the Charlevoix turnovers have been dead ball turnovers. It seems like the Gladiator turnovers, a lot of them have been live ball variety, allowing the Raiders to get out in transition and get early offense. That's absolutely correct. I mean, at least Charlevoix, what, these mistakes that they're making, they're at least able to get into their defenses and settle in. 22-18 the score, 3 minutes, 47 seconds left. That one just kind of went off the fingertips of Harrison Shepard. Uh, I would say credit to the ball pressure applied by Vollmer for that turnover. And I think both teams are now know what they're going to be able to get away with defensively in terms of physicality. So let's look for both teams to play physical the last three and a half minutes of this quarter. It's absolutely going to be a battle. Vollmer on a nice backdoor cut to Peyton Scott. Scott looking for an outlet. Ryan Pearl looks down Isaiah Millward. Little hammer pass to Vollmer. Vollmer going straight up on the baseline. No good, no call. J.P. Miller with the defensive board. Michael Bohr with a show and go. Shut off by Nickel. Shepard driving baseline. Back to Bohr. Bohr going far side to J.P. Miller. Three-pointer up and in. Let me tell you what, folks. It's a grown man's basketball game right now. If you want to play in this one, you better have some ibuprofen in your backpack as a foul is called against Troy Nickel. They're saying he extended that off arm to create a little bit additional space. And the Gladiators with an opportunity to go up by one or two points here on this possession. You know, the coach's messages to the teams are definitely going to be, hey, don't be waiting for calls. You've got to play through all the contact and just finish. Want to mention that we do have a text in line tonight. You can text in at 231-350-9040. Vote for your player of the game as that foul is called against Eli Bigger on the loose ball variety, trying to track down that 
inbounds pass that was deflected. You wouldn't think that too many inbounds passes would be deflected by the Charlevoix defense given their height, but somehow that one got deflected. You know, it's it's the old saying, fake a pass to make a pass, right? doesn't matter what level it is. Can't stare down who you're going to be passing it to. As this one's inbounded to Joe Gaffney, dribbles his way through the pressure. Corner it goes. Raiders with it. Swung around to Nickel. Back up to Pearl up top. He'll drive. Gladiators extending this man-to-man -man pressure. Eli Bigger gets down on the floor for it, but Raiders save it. It's a four-on-three break. Pearl to Vollmer. Good job of defensively getting back into a good standing there by the Gladiators, but Vollmer using the left hand going all the way around the Gladiator defense for another two-point layup, and it's a three-point lead again for the Raiders. Harrison Shepard with it up top, finds Eli Bigger. Maybe they get another post-up touch for Isaiah Millward inside here. Seemingly haven't got a lot of that in this half. Ogden takes the three-pointer, no good. There's Millward out cleaning up the defense or offensive boards. Rebounded, comes out to Gaffney. Two minutes remaining in the second quarter. Gaffney finds Pearl. Hand off to Nickel. No foul trouble for either team so far. Only two team fouls apiece. Troy Nickel looks at a three, stares down the defender, and drains it. His second three-pointer of the ball game, and the Raiders up 6-0, doubling up their lead off that one shot. I think if Charlevoix just sticks to what they're doing, which is just staying patient on offense, they're going to get those looks pretty much all game. There's a three-pointer by J.P. Miller, no good. Rebounded by Peyton Scott. All ten starters back on the floor in this game. Pearl looks at a three, finds good ball reversal. Vollmer with an open three-pointer, and he cans it. So the Raiders in the midst of a six-point run, actually an eight-point run. It was 22-21 to 21 just about two minutes ago. Harrison Shepard with it. Ryan Pro with a three-quarter front on Isaiah Millward as J.P. Miller spins off a defender. A little push shot, no good. Defensive rebound controlled by Peyton Scott and the Raiders. 40 seconds remaining in the second quarter. You know, it's certainly going to be a game of runs. Um, obviously, if Charlevoix is start making those threes, they're going to have to put, start putting some more pressure on the ball. As Joe Gaffney goes behind the back, finds Ryan Pearl in the corner. Pearl swung around the perimeter. Charlevoix looks like they're playing for the last shot of the half right here, Adam. Makes sense. I mean, they've obviously built a lead. Um, they love to go in the locker room with a nice lead. They feel good about what they've done so far in this first half. Nickel spins through a defender, finds Vollmer. Vollmer puts his head down. He's going to drive in. Shots up. Good. Counted in the foul. <laughs> wow. Hudson Vollmer <laughs> said, hold the three-pointer. I'm going to put it on the deck and make something happen. That's only the fifth foul we've seen called in the entire game. And uh, Vollmer going to the free throw line for an and one opportunity here. A very, very different styles of play. Charlevoix is obviously looking to be, you know, they're trying to open things on the outside, create some shots, make some shots, and then create some opportunities on the inside. As, as Vollmer misses the free throw, Ogden with the running gun at the buzzer and count it. Max Ogden putting the Gladiators within eight points after two quarters of play. He sent that one off a one foot to beat the buzzer. So the Gladiators down just eight points after two quarters of play here. We're going to step aside and have our Bingham Insurance halftime show here on Next Level Broadcasting. And we'll also get our insights, summary of the first half, and look ahead to the third quarter coming up in about two minutes right after a word from our sponsors. The custodian hat. The IT hat. And well, the you should have called a professional hat. Auto Owners takes care of your business insurance, so you can take care of everything else. That's simple human sense. Ask Bingham Insurance Services in Charlevoix if auto owners make sense for you. Looks like a 
one All right, here, here we are. Welcome back in to the Bingham Insurance Halftime Show here. Charles Strail along with Adam Warren. We're going to do our little summary here, talking about what we saw in the first half of play, and then after that we'll conclude with our look ahead for the third quarter. So far the Raiders doing a lot of damage from deep. They have six made three-pointers as they have an eight-point advantage. It was Max Ogden, though, who kind of, I don't want to say bailed out the Gladiators there just before the halftime buzzer, but it feels better going into halftime down eight than down 11. You're in a three-score game as opposed to a four-score game. Three-score games feel different than four-score games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously the Gladiators started off a little bit a little bit shaky with all their turnovers, which is really where you're seeing the difference in the game right now. Um, Charlevoix had a lot of the looks that they wanted in the first in the first quarter, just didn't make them. Now, obviously, the turnovers have been not as much for the for first St. Francis, but now Charlevoix starting to make those three pointers. You know, Charlevoix, you know, they they look to they get those outside shots knocked in, and then they, that opens up their driving lanes going to the basket, where St. Francis is almost the opposite. You almost need to get it inside to maybe give them some more of the outside looks. And one of the things that I've noticed, both these teams are, well, I would say this. The Raiders are doing a better job of taking away the Gladiators' strengths than the Gladiators are with taking away the Raiders' strengths. Would you say that's a fair assessment so far, Adam? I would agree. I mean, ultimately, Charlevoix is taking care of the ball. I mean, they've had, I don't know exactly how many turnovers they have, but they've had very few, um, and they're being very patient on offense, getting what they're, what they're, what they're wanting to see. You know, obviously St. Francis would like to pick up the pace, maybe get into their press a little bit more, but obviously that, that requires made shots to get into that press. Um, and you saw a little bit of a run there, um, sort of in the middle of the second quarter, once they were able to start making some shots. So that concludes our summary of the first half. We're going to step aside for about two minutes. When we come back, we'll have a look ahead to the third quarter here between the Raiders and the Gladiators here. High School Basketball on Next Level Broadcasting. Charlevoix State Bank was founded in 1994 to provide exceptional local service to our northern Michigan community. With six locations in Charlevoix, East Jordan, Boyne City, Ellsworth, and Beaver Island, we're here to make banking easy right here in your neck of the woods with people you know. Charlevoix State Bank believes in the positive lessons of high school athletics and is a proud sponsor of tonight's game. Time to fly from your northern Michigan hometown Cherry Capital Airport, TVC. TVC Airport will get you to your dream destination anywhere in the world. Visit tvcairport.com now. Again with Charlotte Boy Auto. Don't let summer pass you by. Get into a new Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram today and make this the summer event. Lease a sleek new compass for an amazing. Th Hi there, Hannah again with Charlotte Boy Auto. Don't let summer pass you by. Get into a new Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram today and make this the summer event. Lease a sleek new compass for an amazing $339 a month. Elevate your journey in a stylish Grand Cherokee for $429 a month. Or unleash the power of a 4x4 Ram pickup for $4.59 a month. Don't miss out in getting into your perfect ride for less at Charlevoix Auto on US 31 South near the Charlevoix Airport. Your trusted local dealership. All right, here we are. Welcome back into the Bingham Insurance Halftime Show here. Charles Strail riding shotgun with me is varsity basketball coach of the Lady Gladiators, Adam Warren, after two quarters of play. Raiders on top of the Gladiators. It's a eight-point game as we enter, well, almost are entering the third quarter between these two teams. And well, both these school or both these teams just have a very defined game plan. Uh, I would say the Gladiators haven't been able to execute theirs as well as the Raiders have so far. Uh, that's probably a reason why they're down eight points at halftime. But while we have the moment, you can see there on the bottom left corner of your screen is the Next Level Broadcasting text in hotline, 231-350-9040. We've got some fans tuning in from Tucson, Arizona. Don't forget to vote for your player of the game tonight for those fans up in Charlevoix. That is the Culver's Butterburger Basket player of the game. 
You can vote in for your favorite player tonight, player you think who is deserving of the Player of the Game Award, and they will get a free Culver's Butter Burger basket provided by Culver's of Charlevoix. And, well, it's an eight-point game. Max Ogden hit the three-pointer just before the horn sounded at the end of the second quarter. Otherwise, it feels like a much larger lead for the Raiders. You know, Charlevoix's Charlevoix going into their halftime feeling pretty good. I mean, I would, right. I would say they pretty much executed their game plan exactly how they wanted to. They're being very efficient. They're taking care of the ball. They're getting the shots that they want. In the first quarter, they didn't make the shot. Second quarter, they did. So I don't see any reason why they would make many changes. Where St. Francis, on the other hand, obviously that last second shot certainly helps get them jump-started maybe into the second half. They just got to take care of the ball. Um, I'd like to see them maybe get a, get the ball inside a little bit. Maybe they'll op open it up on the outside a little bit for them uh, later on. But if they can also get into some pressure situations, which, again, they need to make some shots to get into those. And we just corrected it on our screen. It is 32 to 24, the halftime score. The Raiders ended the second quarter on a 9 to 3 run, which allowed them to get out to this 8 point halftime lead. Adam, a lot of times the most important minutes of the basketball game are the last four minutes of the second quarter and the first four minutes of the third quarter. What do the Gladiators need to do offensively and defensively to try and get this game back into a game that's of their liking, rhythm, and tempo? You know, offensively, they just got to come out here and be efficient, be patient, and get a really good possession to begin things. I mean, even whether they make it or not, if they can just get a nice look, something that they drew up, uh, at least that'll make them, you know, calm down a little bit. But again, I, from what I've seen so far, if, as long as they can, as long as they can take care of the ball, they'll stay within this game, um, and then they'll just see if they can't get it inside and start. You know, uh, taking advantage of what they had, some of the height and athleticism they have in there. Yeah, I would say, you know, Isaiah Millward has six points. He has gotten one, maybe two offensive rebounds and maybe missed one little pup shot inside. But outside of that, it seems like the Raiders have, whether it's been Pearl with that three-quarter uh, front or just the turnovers that have taken the Gladiators out of their offensive scheme has not allowed the Gladiators to go inside to Millward and exploit that sizable mismatch you know he's he's got some athleticism so it would be it would be nice to see is if they get the ball moving from side to side which will allow him as a post player to move from side to side um, so he's not sort of stuck in the block getting that front um, so again if they can get the ball moving um, not only is that just good offense get overloads anyway but that'll get him maybe freed up yeah I, I agree I would say maybe even bring him up as a as a high ball screen uh, see how the Raiders want to play that ball screen but we we do know that both these Head coaches are very, very good coaches and astute to what's going on in the game, what the other team is trying to do or not do, and those different strategies trying to force your team into playing to their weaknesses. So we're going to go ahead and take one more quick sponsor break. This has been the Bingham Insurance Halftime Report here on Next Level Broadcasting. When we come back, Gladiators and Raiders just around the corner, third quarter action coming up after this. You learn to wear a lot of hats. The custodian hat, the IT hat, and well, the you should have called a professional hat. Auto Owners takes care of your business insurance, so you can take care of everything else. That's simple human sense. Ask Bingham Insurance Services in Charlevoix if auto owners make sense for you. All right, here we are, third quarter action on Next Level Broadcasting's coverage of high school basketball, Raiders and Gladiators about to start the third quarter of play. It'll be Gladiator basketball to begin the quarter, and they're looking to come out strong here at the start of the third quarter. Raiders ended the second quarter on a 9-3 to run, which allowed them... Well, Adam, was it a 9-3 to or 9-4 to run? It was a 22-21, I believe. Um, and the Raiders made a free throw, so either 9-3 to three or 9-4 to four run. We'll call it to end the quarter for the Raiders, and, well, here we are. The siding half coming up right now as J.P. Miller has it. Good little double screen to Max Ogden to start the half for the Gladiators, and he cans the triple 
It's a five point game. Ogden with the last six points for the Gladiators. It's obviously the, definitely the way they wanted to start the second half. Very good possession. Obviously drilled the three. As that one was deflected off of J.P. Miller. Good hands by him. Hudson Balmer to inbound from the baseline. And finds Troy Nickel. Nickel working against Eli Bigger. Little phantom screen there. Corner skip pass to Scott. No good. J.P. Miller with the rebound as he brings it across half court for the Gladiators. Ogden being guarded by Troy Nickel. Two leading scorers in this game going against each other right there. J.P. Miller. Inside it goes, deflected by Ryan Pearl out of bounds, trying to get a little inside touch to Millward, and that was a really hard angle there to work from that extended elbow area. Kind of almost got to get further down into the quarter, the I, corner. I think that's a very good point. I mean, most of their post entries have been sort of at the top of the key, which makes it extremely difficult to get it in there. Harrison Shepard coming off the pin down. No good defensive rebound controlled by... Nickel and the Raiders really swarm on the defensive boards, don't they? You know they both play, you know, straight up man to man, but they, they, you know, they're doing a really good job communicating. They do a really good job in help. I mean, I can, I can really hear them communicating here from the sideline. Joe Gaffney breaks down the defense. Scott driving. He's looking for an open teammate. Finds the hands of Gaffney. Gaffney driving straight through. Rebounded by Millward. Gladiators limit the Raiders to one and done on that possession. J.P. Miller now throws it off the rim. Turnover taken by Nickel. It's a two-on-one break for the Raiders. Pass inside to Scott, and he scoops it with the left hand. Nice finish for Scott, and the Raiders get their first bucket of the second half. You know, and again, that's kind of that moral of the story of the first half. We just can't have those turnovers leading to fast break buckets. Ogden slithers through the paint. Millward with an offensive rebound. Got a little hip check there, but no call. And he was unable to make the offensive putback. Nickel with it. Corner goes to Scott. Looking at a three. Had all day to call his mom back home and say, hey, I'm about to take this shot, mom. And he drains it. And the Raiders up by 10. Yeah, St. Francis definitely has to pull up that close As pressure. Joe Gaffney gets the steal on Miller. And he'll go in for two points. So it's now a Raider lead up to a dozen Turnovers really hurting the Gladiators as the Raiders have their last seven points off of turnovers. Ogden taking the deep three-pointer, and he buries it, and that was a much-needed three-pointer for Ogden and the Gladiators. Cutting into the Raider lead, it's a nine-point game. Peyton Scott catches it at midcourt, driving all the way. Scott had it deflected out of bounds. Good play by Isaiah Millward, or was that J.P. Miller who got the deflection there? J.P. Miller got the deflection. So J.P. doing a good job of... Rejecting that shot attempt out of bounds. Checking in for the Gladiators will be number 20. That is uh, Tommy Donahue. First action of the night for Donahue. And just as that happened, Troy Nichols slithered through the middle of the lane and got another deuce. It's an 11-point game now with 4 minutes and 52 seconds to play. Eli Bigger to Donahue. Ogden doubled on the catch. Back to Donahue. And the Raiders with another steal. Joe Gaffney with the lay-in up ahead. A lot of physicality out there on the floor right now. And a timeout taken by Coach Finnegan as the Raider lead has grown to a Baker dozen up 13 points are the Raiders with four minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the quarter. Adam, what's kind of been the driving force of this Raider run? Obviously, they have nine points off of turnovers in this quarter. You know, you just said it. I mean, ultimately, you know, St. Francis needs to be able to take care of the ball. Um, obviously, these turnovers are leading to transition buckets. I mean, with a team as efficient and as Charlevoix has been, you certainly don't want to give them easy baskets in transition. Yeah, and that's what the Raiders have been able to get here in this third quarter. Nine points off of turnovers. I believe that they've really only had one or two true offensive sets. Yep, correct. And I mean, about that same time, they haven't had to have them. You know, they, they're getting those turnovers. They're getting those transition buckets. 
you know, in St. Francis, they shouldn't panic. You know, they're down by 13. They're getting shots. They're getting good shots. They're just, they need to finish around the rim, play through the contact. Again, the officials have been, have been consistent all game. You know, they're letting the kids play. Um, and so they just got to bear down and finish. Yeah, I, I would say, and I would echo your sentiments there. Just need to be more secure with the basketball. And, like, I mean, you look at it, the obvious advantage for the Gladiators would be their size. But the way that the Raiders gang rebound has kind of eliminated that deficiency. You know, it should be a, it's definitely a tribute to their coaching also. I can, you know, from another coaching perspective, I mean, the reality is they're, they take their time, they're being efficient, they're making good passes, they're knowing who they're passing to. Um, Just like that, I mean, uh, Joe Gaffney picks the pocket of Donahue. Eli Bigger taking the three pointer, can't get the roll off the bounce, took two hops off the rim and off the backboard. And it's, it's just been the story of the game, the turnovers. You know, hopefully they'll get that spark. He's, again, you know, Donahue's another one coming off the bench, trying to give them a little emotion, um, and that's what they need. Inbounds pass to Eli Bigger. Ogden turning down the ball screen, doing a good job to get into the paint and a much needed basket to try and stop the bleeding for Ogden and the Gladiators. You know, I'm really impressed with Ogden right now. He's, he's stepping up as a senior. Um, he's maintaining his composure, trying to keep these gladiators in this game. A good ball fake and baseline drive by Hudson Vollmer to extend this lead back to 15 points. The, the trio of Vollmer, Nickel, and Gaffney doing a lot of damage for the Raiders tonight. As Donahue drops one off inside to Bigger. Nice pass and Bigger able to finish up over the top of Nickel. You know, definitely unselfish play there, looking the, for the adjust, the, second, or the, the additional pass off that drive. Yeah, that was a really nice drive by Donahue to find Bigger, who his defense had kind of vacated him. Nickel drives in hard, and what's that? A push that should be on the floor. Looked like maybe it was a foul on Donahue going for the block there. Yep. So it'll go against Tommy Donahue, and they actually are going to call that in the act of shooting. First free throw for Troy Nickel. The seniors' free throw is a little bit short. Checking in for the Gladiators is Chris Bobrowski. Also checking in is Isaac Kerr. It will be interesting to see whether St. Francis tries to dictate some pressure here. Um, Strelavo is so methodical in what they're doing. They need to seize, they need to have, create some turnovers for themselves. Uh, second free throw for Nickel is no good, so the Gladiators catch a break. Nickel 0 for 2 from the free throw line there. Three minutes and five seconds to go in the third quarter. Bigger to Bobrowski. Tried setting the screen, but the Raider defense is really sagging off of Bobrowski. Bigger driving through the middle, blocking foul called against Peyton Scott. Nice job on Bigger that time, trying to dictate some some contact. You know, right now that you know Charlevoix sagging on their pressure. I mean, really, Ogden's really the only one scoring. So you know, why close out anybody else at this point? Exactly as that one's inbounded to Eli Bigger in the corner, going inside to Kerr, and just like that, the Gladiators get a nice score on the inside of that Raider defense. Kerr was definitely active on that one. He was definitely moving, really demanding the ball. Corner three by Vollmer is up and in, and it seems like every time the Gladiators fight back, the Raiders have a counter punch ready to go as it's now 50 to 36. Apologize, our scoreboard is a little bit inactive right now as Ogden tees up the three, short offensive board to Bigger, back to Ogden, driving middle, left-handed scoop, count it. He'll go to the line for a three-point play. That was a nice little flip by Max Ogden, and the Gladiators needed it. Now they need to hit this free throw, and they need to stop on the other end. Nice job that time with Ogden. I mean, obviously, he didn't settle for that three-point play. Really initiated contact inside with that finish. Now they're able to set up that press and maybe get a turnover off of it. 
replacing Eli Bigger for the Gladiators is uh, checking in. Uh, Michael Bohr replacing Bigger as it's now 50 to 39. Joe Gaffney working it, step through. Vollmer has it in the corner. 50 to 39, one minute, 50 seconds left. We apologize, our scoreboard is a little frozen here on the screen. Gaffney has it, driving middle, stolen away by Harrison Shepard. Shepard with an even numbered break, actually a two on three, and he pulls it back wisely for the Gladiators. Smart play, they need a good possession out of this one. And it's turned over. Gaffney has it for the Raiders. Intended target for the Gladiators was Bobrowski, and he just couldn't squeeze it. Pearl, Raiders now doing a little weave up top. Gaffney going to drive in. Floater is up and in. Nice mid-range shot shown there by Joe Gaffney as he was able to drop that one in. 52-39 to 39 now the score. And a, a three-pointer by Ogden makes it a 10-point game once again. You know, every time it looks like it's going to get out of control for St. Francis, Ogden seems to you know, step up. Again, that senior leadership's huge. Oh, yeah, you, you absolutely got to have it. As Vollmer, who is a senior, catches in the corner. Pearl tees up the three-pointer. No good. It's a 10-point game, 52-42. to 42. 29 seconds remaining. Bobrowski letting one fly. No good. Offensive board coming out to Kerr. Put back is good. And it's an eight-point game just, to, just as it was as we entered the third quarter of play. What a swing in this one. You said this would be a game of runs, and it sure has. Nickel breaking down the defense. Peyton Scott driving baseline. Shut off by Bohr. Inside the Pearl flip shot. No good. Couldn't finish it. Corner kick. Three-pointer for Vollmer at the buzzer. No good. So after three quarters of play, it's going to be an eight-point lead the Raiders take into the fourth quarter. Stay tuned. Fourth quarter coming up right after this. We got a special look at our 2024 promo for the Northern Michigan Showcase, which is going to be here at Traverse City St. Francis High School on February 10th. Take a look at this, folks. You're going to want to not miss this special event coming up in February. The first annual Northern Michigan Showcase between teams from all across the state, all divisions, all athletic abilities. Nasadis all the way to the free throw line. Tried to get it to Hagelstein, but it was stolen. Nasadis gets it right back. Always oh, going to pull it. Got it. Oh, huge shot. Hagelson through the contact, there's a cup guarded by Nasadis and it's stolen away. Hagelson corner three, up and good. That's so automatic, they're looking for it every time. And stolen away, Nasadis gets the steal, up with the right hand and in. Just took it right from him, a cup got a little too fancy. And here we are, fourth quarter underway here, Gladiators and the Raiders. Corner kick to Pearl, he has it. Peyton Scott now with it up on top. Get our clock there, it's going to be a foul called against the Gladiators, stopping the clock with three minutes. 30 seconds remaining, Charles Strail and Adam Warren here. And this game, it's, well, it's been a very, very, I'd say a game of runs. I mean, yeah. just go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's been very entertaining, like I said, with letting the kids play, playing through some of these contacts. Both teams are not doing anything weird. Right. They're all playing that straight-up man stuff. It's just who's got the will. As Vitalik Collins called for a foul in the backcourt, only the – that will be the first team foul of the quarter for the Raiders. New this year to high school basketball, if you're just kind of tuning in. Both teams will be in the double bonus if each team hits five team fouls. So a rule change this year. 
meant to try and expedite the game a little bit as Shepard passes off to Michael Bohr. He'll let one fly and misses everything on that one. Just couldn't quite dial in the range there from deep for Bohr, so it'll be Raider basketball. You know, it's definitely going to be, you know, the next two minutes are going to be really important. I mean, St. Francis really needs some good, just good possessions, convert, see if they can get a couple stops. Uh, I totally agree with that as Nickel has it guarded by Max Ogden. Nickel hands off to Peyton Scott. Pearl with a little head fake. Under seven minutes to play now. Peyton Scott cut off nicely by Bohr. Nickel. Skip pass to Pearl. Pearl working it in the paint. Good defense by the Gladiators here. Absolutely, they're locked in. You know, but the concern here is, you know, high school basketball. There's no shot clock, and as deliberate as Charlevoix is, and they haven't really been turning the ball over. St. Francis got to make something happen somehow here. Yeah, the offensive efficiency tonight for Charlevoix through the roof. As Nickel sizes up Ogden, shut off by Ogden. Pearl catches. Gladiators playing about three feet off of Pearl as he, they know that he is a main distributor for him. He wants to find those passing lanes. You know, again, 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 at this point, you know, Charlevoix clocks in their favor. There's no reason for them to hurry. Um, you'll notice I mean, they just passed up a wide open three. Yep. And maybe a little bit too cautious there with that possession, Adam, because Peyton Scott had a wide open shot and he didn't take it. That's one in the first quarter he probably lets go immediately. You know, the game's certainly not over. And, it, and with, it, with it only being eight points, you know, this can turn in a hurry. Under six minutes to go now as Harrison Shepard being guarded by Logan Watkins, who just recently checked into the game for the Raiders. Five on the floor for the Gladiators is Ogden Bobrowski, who's driving baseline right there, shut off, and back to Michael Bohr. Isaac Kerr and Harrison Shepard, five on the floor for the Gladiators as Vitaly Collins gets the face guarding steal. Stolen away by him. Pearl now with it. Shovels it back off to Gaffney. That was a big time defensive play to not only face guard and deny and still get the steal by Collins. Good pass set up by Gaffney. Finds Ryan Pearl on the easy little duck in for Pearl. 10 point advantage now for the Raiders. Michael Bohr sends one up and drops it in. That's what the Gladiators needed. It's a seven point game now between Raiders and Gladiators. Vitaly Collins with it, guarded by Bobrowski, poked away and out of bounds. It'll be Raider ball, sideline out of bounds. Uh, Adam, you had a close game against the Lady Raiders. It was a double overtime one up in Charlevoix earlier this year. It seems like whenever these two schools get together, it's a competitive matchup. You know, absolutely. It was a, that was a fun game. We, were, you know, Obviously, we were on the losing end of that, but um, it was certainly a great game to begin our season. Um, Charlevoix has a good team, and we look forward to seeing them again. That's right. That matchup will be coming again, uh, I believe, first week of February. He'll be hosting the Lady Raiders. As Gaffney, working against Harrison Shepard, works his way into the paint and kind of corkscrews in, and he'll earn a trip to the free throw line. You know, at this point in the game, it's all about stops. You know, St. Francis has to get a stop, and then every possession matters. Yeah. You know, so. Gap into the free throw line for a pair. So far tonight, Gaffney with, well, now, now he has 13 points to our unofficial count. Adam, can you confirm? That's correct. And he makes both at the line, so give Gaffney 14 points right along his par level for the season. Actually, just a little bit under par. He averages just a hair over 16 points a game. Four minutes, 25 seconds left. Ogden with a deep three-pointer, a little short. Isaac Kerr inside battling for it, and a whistle. And I think this one's going to go against Kerr with an over-the-back call. You know, certainly would love to see that rebound, but you gotta, you got to applaud the effort. I mean, St. Francis would have loved to have a put back there. Inbounded to Troy Nickel, five on the floor for the Raiders. Nickel, Watkins, Gaffney, Pearl, and Collins. Little pocket pass to Collins off of the trap and assist to Watkins as the Raiders break the gladiator pressure. 
Still only an 11 point game. Harrison Shepard's gonna take the pull up jump shot. No good foul called away from the ball. It was going to be called against Vitaly Collins just trying to deny Ogden the basketball. Not sure what the discussion is on the floor. It was not a shooting foul. And it appears that the men in the striped shirts have it all sorted out. Harrison Shepard inbound, goes inside to Isaac Kerr, and Kerr finishes it at the rim nicely. Good sideline out of bounds pass, and good play by the Gladiators to get Kerr an easy one inside. You know, there's still, no, you know, still pl one, plenty of time, no reason yeah. to panic at this point. One of the things working against the Gladiators is the Raiders' ability to shoot free throws, though, as especially when you have five guys on the floor. When you look at Pearl, he's able to handle the ball pretty well for a guy his size and a very good decision maker as the Gladiators get the defensive rebound, get the stop, and get a foul going against the Raiders. So there's one stop. What a lot of teams do is they will chart consecutive stops because oftentimes to mount a comeback, you need to get consecutive of four or five stops in a row as well as having good offensive possessions. So if the Gladiators can string together four or five defensive stops, secure them with a defensive rebound, that is the right mixture to mount a comeback. Michael Bohr with it. Swung around the perimeter now. Raiders look a little confused defensively as Harrison Shepard penetrates the paint. Back out to King, and King drops it in for two. Raiders with it up top. Bringing it around the perimeter. They catch it right there. Three-pointer by Watkins is in all the way down for three by the Raiders. And Watkins with a big-time shot for the Raiders. And that's stolen away by Troy Nickel. Nickel now finds Ryan Pearl. And the Raiders look pretty content here to try and work this clock. Ballmer now with it back to Pearl. Hand off to Nickel. Raiders got this possession with two minutes and 22 seconds on the clock. Let's see how much time they take off. Up 10 points. Corner it goes to Vollmer, and he's called for the offensive foul. Ten point advantage now for the Raiders. One minute and 46 seconds to go in this one. Harrison Shepard finds Chris Bobrowski. Bobrowski now finds Ogden. Wadkins guarding him tightly. Double teamed on Ogden briefly. Ogden tries to drive left handed. Puts up the shot from the baseline. 15 footer is good. It's an eight point game. Timeout taken by the Gladiator bench. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick time out as well. Thank our friends at Traverse City Cherry Capital Airport when we come back on the other side of this 20 seconds. Time to fly from your Northern Michigan hometown Cherry Capital Airport, TVC. TVC Airport will get you to your dream destination anywhere in the world. Visit tvcairport.com now. And here we are, welcome back in to high school basketball on Next Level Broadcast. And we got a good one here between the Raiders and the Gladiators, these two teams squaring off in the Lake Michigan Conference clash. Raiders up 61 to 53, it's an eight point game. It was only, uh, it was an eight point game at halftime as well. So two teams playing each other very evenly here in the second half of play. Raiders to inbound, it'll be Hudson Vollmer throwing it deep down the floor. That's going to be a turnover. And 
unfortunately for the Raiders, the Gladiators are going to be able to inbound that ball from the exact spot where it was turned over from. Basket underneath or baseline out of bounds. Crucial mistake there. I mean, I, I see that. I mean, it was obviously open. It was a, a neat idea maybe earlier in the game, but right now, I mean, the clock's on their side. They definitely don't want to turn it over with no time. Harrison Shepard inbound underneath his basket. Finds Bobrowski, and Bobrowski is fouled by Ryan Pearl. Then that is the fifth foul against the Raiders. So Bobrowski going to the free throw line for two free throws here at a critical junction in the game right now. Gladiators can score without the clock moving. That's huge, you know, obviously with the new rule, now that they've gotten the five fouls, they're gonna get two shots every time they get a foul. First shot for Bobrowski is up and down. Seven point game now. Gladiators one shot away from making this a two score contest. Bobrowski's second is right down the middle. Raiders inbound it, Logan Watkins has it for the Raiders. They find Ryan Pearl right back to Hudson Vollmer. Excellent job of breaking the pressure, and the Raiders go back up by nine. Excuse me, go back up by eight. St. Francis doesn't have a lot of time here to play around. One, just over one minute left to go in the fourth quarter. Ogden driving to his spot on the right side wing, rebounded by Troy Nickel. Uh, Gladiators are gonna have to give a foul here soon because they only have three team fouls. And there they have the foul to give there to get them into the position to extend this game. You know, certainly not working in their favor. You know, Charlevoix is a good free throw shooting team. You know, they need to get the clock stopped, but you're obviously hoping on a 75%-ish type free throw shooting team to start missing. Right, Vollmer to inbound, finds Nickel. Nickel going all the way down, up and in. Nickel scores it to extend it to a 10 point lead once again. He's played a whale of a game. Ogden to Bobrowski. That is Donahue driving middle. Good hands by Nickel. And Vollmer fouled as he'll head over to the free throw line. Raiders with a 10 point lead. I don't want to say this one is in the books here, Adam, but this Raider efficiency down the stretch, I mean, Outside of that one kind of mental miscue on the baseball pass, they've been pretty locked in. You know, there's a lot of maturity on that team. They got a lot of juniors and seniors, and the one sophomore that they have plays with a lot of maturity himself, plays within himself, doesn't try to play outside of his own game. Um, you can tell they've been well coached, very, and they're just very disciplined. Vollmer gets the pair at the free throw line. It's now our 12 point lead for the Raiders. Ogden being guarded by two Raiders. Finds Harrison Shepard, three-pointer just a little bit too strong. Squeezed by Troy Nickel. Raiders up the into the front court. And they're going to hold this basketball as Gaffney's fouled. And Gaffney will go to the free throw line for two free throws. And the Raider fans here in attendance can really feel this one now. Yep, absolutely. You know, obviously St. Francis needs to really look at their game. Obviously, I mean, both teams have really played together. I mean, you know, played with each other the whole game, except for in the, in the, in the beginning. And St. Francis had all those turnovers, and it's just so, it's very difficult to overcome that. And the Culver's Butterburger basket player of the game has officially been awarded to Troy Nickel for his performance here tonight in this game as Ogden takes the pull-up jump shot in transition and it misses with one second remaining in this one. The Raiders are going to escape with a victory down in, yeah, down in Traverse City. So after four quarters, the Raiders win 69 to 55, a huge win as it pertains to the conference standings for the Charlevoix Raiders coming down to Traverse City and getting this one in the books. Both teams now go to three and one in conference play. Raiders with one loss coming to Grayling. Gladiators with this one loss coming to the Raiders. So Adam, how would you kind of summarize this game? I know the, the Gladiators kind of, I don't, I don't want to say fumbled it away in the first half, but a lot of those turnovers gave Charlevoix a great amount of confidence. You know, they're very similar teams. You know, um, I just, you, you just, both teams need to play with efficiency and those turnovers in the beginning game ultimately decided the outcome. 
Um, you know, fortunately for St. Francis, you know, they're going to have another shot at them again, and they've got some time to maybe clean that up a little bit um, and maybe change, you know, just change the tide a little bit later on in the season. But um, I was really impressed with, you know, again, Charlevoix's maturity and their just their discipline and their efficiency. Yeah, I, I would, if, if you're the Gladiators, I would say some of those possessions early on in the game really enabled the Raiders to get good, comfortable, in-rhythm jump shots. I think forcing a team to play against this man-to-man -man defense that St. Francis has the capability of playing is how you want to play against teams that are patient, move the ball well, and like the Raiders with multiple guys who can dribble, pass, and shoot. It makes it very challenging to guard those types of teams because you're not able to switch everything. You have to fight through a lot of those screens, and when they do break you down and break down your defense, it's important not to overhelp. So I would say, from a Gladiator perspective, they'll see that on film and say, hey, we can't overhelp. We need to make sure that we don't allow the Raiders to dominate them on the glass. I think the Raiders controlled the backboards tonight, which was, if not the first or second most important thing tonight in this game outside of turnovers was uh, controlling the rebounds off the glass. You know, Charlevoix is a well-balanced team. You know, they had seven, I believe, seven players um, that nearly, you know, were all pretty close to double digits. So that, that whole concept of overhelping that you're referring to is extremely important. But the biggest thing is because they're so methodical, they're going to get the shots that they want. You cannot afford to give them extra possessions easy possessions you know it, I think the best way you can do is just you know they're going to play the way they play and if they miss they miss and then you just, you just got to maximize your possessions as well I agree with that completely so for myself Charles Strail Adam Warren our cameraman tonight BB we want to thank you for making us a part of your Wednesday evening in northern Michigan or all throughout the world, wherever you're tuning in from on the YouTube live stream or on nextlevelbroadcasting.net. Thanks for making us part of your Wednesday evening here from Traverse City St. Francis High School signing off. Thank you. Have a great rest of your evening, everyone. Good night. Until next time from, our, from us here at Next Level Broadcasting, thank you. Charlevoix State Bank was founded in 1994 to provide exceptional local service to our northern Michigan community. With six locations in Charlevoix, East Jordan, Boyne City, Ellsworth, and Beaver Island, we're here to make banking easy right here in your neck of the woods with people you know. Charlevoix State Bank believes in the positive lessons of high school athletics and is a proud sponsor of tonight's game. Time to fly from your northern Michigan hometown Cherry Capital Airport, TVC. TVC Airport will get you to your dream destination anywhere in the world. Visit tvcairport.com now.